This time, the appetizer is done by Will Greenwood in Nashville. It features saffron-infused bay scallops presented with an artichoke and orzo, called Mediterranean salad. Then we visit Thierry Rotaro's Stella French restaurant in Seattle. His entree is Columbia River sturgeon with tomato, citrus, and basil stew. Finally, pastry chef Lisa Anderson prepares dessert in New Orleans. In a cobbler crust, she offers a fresh pineapple filling topped with a crumble. It's her pineapple brown sugar crisp. Will Greenwood received national attention at the Tony Jefferson Hotel in Washington, D.C. Much was due to his careful research of Thomas Jefferson's cooking. Then he went to the Sunset Grill in Nashville. So much for research. They do 1,200 covers a night. Here are scallops with Mediterranean salad. Uh, this is a nice light uh, appetizer course. It's chilled, so you should enjoy it for that. Um, first you take clam stock or fish stock, whichever you might have, and you add some saffron threads to it. And you bring it to a simmer for about 10 minutes so that the uh, saffron can release the color. You can put your bay scallops. These are a little large as far as bay scallops, but they're very tender, very sweet. I prefer bay scallops over sea scallops. Put those right in, cover the pot, and you can take it off and let it steep for about 10 minutes. Next, we're going to do the orzo salad. You want to take some cooked orzo. Though it looks like rice, orzo is a tiny pasta. Some diced red pepper, some diced green pepper, some diced red onion, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of oil. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. Some salt and a little cracked black pepper. I like cracked black pepper over white pepper personally. I think it has a better flavor. I know you end up with the black specks, but I don't think it's such a big deal. And you just mix that up. This dish uses artichokes. Now, a lot of people will pare down the artichoke before they cook it. This is nice because you can cook the, the whole artichoke and let it just uh, rest in its juices overnight and then come back to it the next day when it's cold. You can just pull off the leaves. So you get to some of the tender heart. And you just cut that down. Pull out the inside choke, which is very, very tough. And clean out the inside hair that's inside the, uh, the actual bottom. It's good to let the scallops marinate overnight in the liquid. It'll get a nice orange color, bright yellow, very pretty. We're ready to assemble the dish. You want to pair off the bottom so that it stays nice and flat. Top it off with some of the scallops. Now I've made some uh, tomato vinaigrette, some olive vinaigrette, and some fennel vinaigrette. Uh, basically just pureed each one of these ingredients with some uh, olive oil.
I've got some uh, I got some baby eggplants that I just put in the oven with a little bit of olive oil and roasted them. When they were done, I just split them right open. And then I scooped them out and I made a little bit of eggplant puree here. That's mixed with salt, olive oil, and a little bit of garlic. Now certainly in the Mediterranean area they have capers and you can find what they call caper berries. They're a little bit more mature caper. Put that down here. And then I like to have a little bit of salad greens with this so it looks nice. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of lemon juice, some salt and pepper. And then you can top it off with a little bit of tomato. And then I made some uh, little lentil crackers here that you can put along the side as a little garnish. Now you've got a nice Mediterranean scallop salad. Nineteen ninety eight was a great year at Rovers in Seattle. Chef owner Thierry Rotoro was named Best Chef Northwest by the James Beard Society, tying with Corey Schreiber. Then in the ninety eight Gourmet Readers poll, Rovers received the Top Table Award for Seattle. Here is an entree with Columbia River Sturgeon. Here are some beautiful medallions of uh, Columbia River Sturgeon. Then we have boned out. First we fillet them. Then we bone them out and skin them out. Then slice them into some uh, smaller portions of the fillet. These slices will be grilled. First they will be covered with olive oil and then grilled. Served on a bed of citrus. For the citrus stew that we're gonna do today, we use some pink grapefruit, oranges, lime, and some Roma tomato, along with some purple and green basil. First, we skin the citruses. Coming down right below the skin level, just so you only get the beautiful meat of the grape of the citruses. The next combination is to go in between each segment and allows you to extract just the meat, no seeds, no skin. The same procedure is used for the lime and orange. The next thing that goes in the citrus stew are the tomatoes, which you will make a little cross at the end of your tomato to allow, once blanched, the peel to come off. On the core side, just gently put your thumb in the middle and go gently around it. it allows you to pull the core out. The tomato goes into boiling water for 20 to 30 seconds, then is plunged into an ice bath and peeled. And gently put it off, put it out into a water bath. Gently put it in a very cold ice bath. And gently start putting on the tomato peel. Cut in half your tomato. Once you've seeded it out, gently give it a very thin slice.
and then put it in your citrus stew. Added to this will be the purple basil and the, the purple basil and the green basil, which we will take the leaves and slice very thinly. Put the whole stew into a pan. Add a little chopped shallots. And a little chopped garlic as well. Bring it to a medium heat. And also add on all your extra virgin olive oil. Be sure not to boil that sauce. It is very important for the citrus not to be boiled, otherwise they will break down. Now the sturgeon. Been slightly covered with olive oil and poured onto the grill. Or I should say grill. The fillets are seared on one side, then turned twice. They will be finished in a hot oven. Mark your sturgeon on one side, flip it on the other side, then come back onto the first side. Be sure not to over grill it, it will become very dry. It's preferable to just grill it very rare and finish it in the oven for a few minutes rather than overcook it on the grill. Place all your citrus stew. Onto the plate. Place your sturgeon. Garnish for decoration will be used big green basil heads, purple basil head, and a little nurstitiums.
After graduating from the CIA in 1993, Lisa Anderson externed in New Orleans at Mr. B's Bistro. Sherrod Maras was executive chef there. Six years later, she has teamed again with him, only this time as pastry chef at Gerard's downtown. Her dessert is an old-fashioned pineapple crisp. The cobbler crust starts with dry ingredients, all-purpose flour, cornmeal, sugar, salt, and baking powder. Can you add your chilled butter? The wet ingredients are one egg, vanilla extract, and ice water. Ready? What you're trying to achieve is to have the butter completely worked into the dry ingredients, but without the butter clumping out. So you want a mealy texture. like this, sandy. Combine your dry or your wet ingredients. Work the dough till it comes together. The finished dough should be chilled for an hour. Now the crumble. You have your brown sugar, your sugar, and your flour together. I'm going to also add a little cinnamon for flavoring, salt. Add these to the mixer. After these ingredients are thoroughly combined, chilled butter is added. Add your chilled butter. We're going to mix until the butter is once again pea-sized, and then it'll start clumping again into a crumbly mixture. The mixture just starts to crumble and clump. Pull it off. And kind of this chunky consistency. Now the chilled cobbler dough is rolled out. to about a third of an inch thin and then cut it to the size of your baking dish. Okay. The dough is fitted into a ring mold and the excess removed. The filling starts with sliced fresh pineapple. You want to remove this inner core on the pineapple. It's pretty tough. Yes. 
and any eyes that are left, you just want to trim those off. Want to season the pineapple? Just a little bit of allspice. A little salt to bring out the flavor. Freshly ground nutmeg. Just a little sugar. If you have a ripe enough pineapple, you don't need too much. The pineapple goes into the cobbler molds, and then the crumble mixture tops them. Bake at 350 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes until golden brown, and the pineapple juices are bubbling. The cobbler is served with vanilla ice cream and oven-dried pineapple slices. The sauce is a combination of rum and simple syrup.